I bought a little radio because I watched a video where Mr. Carlson of Mr. Carlson's lab restored a little transistor radio like this, and I'm impressionable and stupid. Um, but also, I think little radios like this are really neat. I actually already have a modern one um, that is arguably better in pretty much every way. Um, this one does shortwave AM, FM. Um, this one just does AM. Um, but, you know, I think they're, they're really neat. I thought I would get this one to take a look, and it was only about $14 shipped, so it's really not a huge deal if everything goes completely wrong. Uh, for once, I'm doing one of these videos properly. This is the first time I've ever looked at this thing. You are seeing my genuine, well, hearing my genuine reactions. Um, my genuine reaction to seeing the outside is that it's in pretty good shape. Even the, um, I think this is a genuine leather case, a very low quality leather case, uh, but actual leather. Yeah, this thing's in really, really good shape. I cannot remember from the listing if they said that it worked. I actually kind of prefer that they didn't test it, because uh, I'm not sure what you know their procedure for trying to turn it on would be. So, my procedure for turning it on. First, I'm going to open it up. Let's see, yeah, pop it open there. And I just want to look, I am actually going to try and turn it on before taking it apart to restore it or anything. Everything looks okay. The concern is these capacitors, modern capacitors, are vented up top, so if they pop, you can see it, and it vents away from the board. It's not as as dangerous to the board. These are not like that. If these vent, they are very likely to vent down into the board. There is some kind of sheen on the board, but it's, it's pretty much everywhere, um, even places where there are not capacitors. I think that might be normal, or it might have been from a battery leaking, but this paper behind the, the battery, uh, let me refocus, this paper where the battery was sitting is in pretty good shape, so I kind of doubt there was any battery leakage, and this is also in pretty good shape. So, probably good there. Might be able to see what I'm talking about if I focus down on the board. Is this kind of kind of shininess? Um, but it's dry. Can I scrape it off? Can't really scrape it off with a fingernail, so it's dry and hard. I think it is supposed to be there. Um, yeah. So I'm going to try powering this up. I'm going to do it carefully. I'm not going to use an actual 9 volt battery. I'm going to use a bench power supply so I can set a current limit. I'm going to set that up, set the camera up, be back in a moment. Correction. Uh, I don't know if you're going to be able to see this. The light isn't great, nor the angle. There is a little bit of evidence of corrosion on this, this battery terminal here. So there may have been a leaky battery in here but it probably wasn't too bad or this paper would be destroyed. Okay, I've got this all set up. I have no idea what current draw this thing you know, should have, but I'm gonna start at 100 milliamps limit. I figure that's probably reasonably safe. Um, the power switch in the unit is in what I believe to be the off position, and as an extra not precaution so much, but I have a thermal camera ready um, so that if if something looks like it's going haywire, I can take a look at it thermally and see what that is. Just connected the power supply and I've got zero current, so power switch appears to be working. That's good. 
turn. That scratchiness is all on me moving the volume knob. I'm trying. That's terrible. It's a radio station. That is working. It is real hard to tune in. The volume pot, volume knob, has some dead spots, and that should be on. I have to clean that, um, but the radio appears to be working. I'm not sure if the you know tracking or anything like that is correct. I'm gonna have to put an antenna on the scope and see what. Actually, I guess I could just use the other radio. I'm gonna have to see what AM stations are actually available here um, and see if I can tune into them on a spot on the the tuning dial that is appropriate. Um, but yeah, this is working. Sort of. Oh, and uh, while it's while it's running, I'm just topping out around 40, 50 milliamps. So this should actually even be, you know, still decent, not fantastic, as a, a portable device, even in the modern era, with a, a big beefy, you know, modern uh, lithium ion. 9 volt battery, 600 milliamps, it's going to last a good 12 hours or so on a charge. And this is not a standard size headphone jack, not a modern standard, you know, quarter inch, uh, quarter inch, eighth inch. This is not the standard uh, modern headphone jack. This is the, the smaller one, it looks like. Um, looking inside, it looks like it's the same same design that, that TRS um, style jack, but it's just the, the smaller one, um, not the one we would normally associate with headphones today. I am actually now realizing that these metal cans are not electrolytic capacitors. It's just these, which are labeled. Um, just these green plastic packages are the electrolytics. These metal cans, it's a little hard to see the three legs from the top here. But I'm fairly certain that these metal cans are actually these six transistors promised here. Can I get that in focus? Six transistor. Six transistor. Yeah, these are the six promised transistors in metal can packages. So yeah, pretty old, probably 1960s. Before I get started, I just wanted to point out, this is kind of neat. Um, I am the first person to ever try to take this apart or adjust it or anything, you can tell. Um, this is kind of a primitive warranty seal. The screws and the adjustment caps, trimmer caps, have been painted uh, so that Presumably Westinghouse would be able to tell if you sent this in for repair and you had already taken it apart and broken it. Uh, they would know. I had to get the macro rings out for this. I was a little bit worried about getting the screws out of this old plastic, but quality blast from the past. There are metal threaded inserts in here that those screws go into, so no problems whatsoever. The board is out. It is so. Uh, very handmade, not particularly remarkable for the era that I was thinking. It looks very much like you would expect for a probably mid to late 60s circuit board. Um, only other things that I've taken apart from this era were a kind of mid-grade uh, Sony reel-to-reel -reel player, and it was... Uh, <laughs> It was very fancy inside, uh, very similar style of construction, but uh, much less haphazard. 
than this. This was a this was a consumer unit and not a not a prosumer unit. Even this was mass produced uh, to sell on the cheap. So, what I am thinking about doing now that I have the board out, I'm probably going to desolder the wires from the speaker so I can actually get the board out and work on it. And I'm going to remove the electrolytics, probably. Probably going to change out all the electrolytics. Uh, this one looks like it might be kind of a hassle, but I might give it a shot. Um, the reason for doing that, I think, is pretty self-explanatory. You don't want to leave really old electrolytics in anything, although on a, a low power, low voltage circuit like this, um, there might not be any problems. That that old uh, Sony Sony receiver, uh, Sony reel-to-reel -reel player I was talking about, none of the electrolytics really seem to have any significant problems. So some very old electrolytics in some applications, uh, if they were very, very high quality, Initially, uh, they might not have any problems, but I'm um, definitely this one seems like it'd be really easy to pull out. I might just take maybe that one and this one as, as samples and test them, and if they're they're good, I'll I'll put them back in and just leave the other ones alone. Other than that, I want to get the the knob off of the volume power switch here and get some contact cleaner in there and work it around. I've gotten the largest and easiest to remove capacitor out and there doesn't really seem to be any leakage from the bottom. There's a little bit of flux residue on this side from me desoldering it but it looks to be in pretty good physical condition. Marcon Never heard of them before. I'll look them up. Maybe they're a really good, good old brand. I don't know. Interesting capacitor package. The plastic, plastic bodied electrolytic capacitor like that. That is not something that has really survived into the modern era. That seems pretty reasonable for a very old capacitor like this. Not sure what V loss means. I would assume that is leakage over time. Once it stops charging the capacitor, it lets it leak and determines what... I don't know. I'll have to look it up. Uh, but that ESR looks reasonable. Uh, that's very close to the rated capacity so no problems there I didn't have a modern 50 mic capacitor because that's not a standard value but I did have a 47 mic let's see how that behaves same test that goes very quickly up into the mega ohms Discharge it and try again. It goes almost immediately to mega ohms. So I don't know if this is a like a super good way to test if a capacitor is leaky or not. But what I do know is that I have one 50 mic capacitor that behaves in one way and I have a new one, a known good one that behaves in a very different way so I'm probably going to replace at least the easy to get to electrolytics, certainly this one that I've already got out I'm in the process pulling out the next most accessible capacitor here. I've got to be really careful because there is actually some point-to-point -point goodness. I don't know if it was designed that way. I don't know if it was a factory bodge, um, but one of the legs actually has to come over and make contact with this other pad, these other legs here, and then this wire has to come down and glom 
on top. So I did get the last of these easy capacitors replaced. This is a, a modern style circuit board in that there are traces and pads and stuff um, but they didn't really know what to do with it uh, this early on. There's still a lot of point-to-point uh, -point style stuff with the leads kind of folded over and connected together uh, kind of like I do when I'm making uh, a perf board circuit board at home so that I don't need to have extra wires and stuff. Uh, this, while it's out, I did measure and it is pretty well out. Uh, this should be a 5.6k and it's reading 7.2 which is about 30% rather than 20% that the no band should suggest. Um, I would consider replacing this one since it's so easy uh, but I don't have any more 5.6k resistors. The rest of them are pretty hard to get at to even test and it is working so I'm just gonna leave them but I'm gonna try and replace this last electrolytic here but you can see it is really crammed in there. This is a good example of what I'm talking about. You can see there's there's a trace there. There's really no reason to have those uh, this leg or these two legs touching each other. Uh, you could just poke them through, solder it, and clip them off clean. But whoever assembled it was probably so used to point to point that they thought that was a good idea. Uh, it makes it a little annoying to desolder and take out now, but at the time it probably made a lot of sense. Okay, time to make sure this still works. I think I've got all the connections made back properly. Uh, I'm taking the precaution of going back to the bench supply rather than a battery. The volume now still has that. Up to the Fairfield to Manuel Campos. Your next traffic update 1018 on the traffic leader KCBS. Definitely still working. On the skies at the coast and by the bay tonight. 740 Tomorrow, and it would be the, the 7 would be just a little past the, the window in the front there. The the bay, so that's good. The uh, I'm just going to put this traffic back and together. together. I'm sure it's not working perfectly, but it is working well enough for me. How are they? Okay, they're having a buy two, get one free. Oh, it's back together. It goes back together pretty more, easy. Uh, it's not over-engineered like a lot of modern devices. Like a lot of modern devices. Um, you just kind of stuff it all back in there and it goes back together. Um, tracking's pretty good. This is uh, 7.40 a.m. And then just a little bit past the 7 there. We go down a little bit. I can get 680 here. So yeah, it's working, working good. Week. Sounds okay. Volume's good unless I try to really drive the snot out of it. Yeah. <laughs> You know, if you said you led the league in batting seven times, $100. Little bonus. And Pretty sure this is 810. Yeah, yeah, kind of a smack dab between the seven and the ten. For example. 